Age of Wonders 4, there is a brand new paid for DLC and a free update out for console and Steam as we speak. The Wolf update is a free update and it actually changes quite a lot to do with the base game. They're trying to fix a few of the flaws um, currently in the game and of course improve it and implement a few extra things going forward with this new paid for DLC as well. So we're going to be talking about what exactly this update and DLC bring you and is it worth to jump back into this game now with these brand new added features. And don't forget if this is the kind of content that you want to see guys hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. First of all let's talk about this free update the wolf update and exactly what it brings to you now i'm going to be grabbing a few of the 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 bigger points from the patch notes because there was a lot changed here some of the things that they did actually change was quite detailed as well so i'm not going to talk about absolutely everything what i will do is link the full patch notes down in the description on the video so if you want to check it out then you know where to go First of all, let's talk about bounties. Bounties is a really interesting feature that's been added. So that way you or the other AI around the game get to put bounties on certain factions, which everyone can choose to take up now these bounties are typically time related there will be a task to do within a certain amount of turns and whoever does it within that time gets to claim the prize but it's a really good way to help organize your troops your allies and the surrounding little factions around the map I love this. Anything that helps give some kind of structure to um, to the AI, I think it's a really good thing. I think it's going to change up a little bit of the gameplay, especially on PvP. Next, they have completely reworked the Pantheon, which I personally think is a massive thing. Something that I love about this game is that when you complete a map, your ruler essentially gets to ascend and you can see them in later playthroughs. But it was always a little bit lackluster. Now, not only do you get to do that, but when you do, your ruler gets a brand new trait you get to pick the trait added to your character you also get to keep any uh transformation that you may have undertook earlier in your campaign which i think is also brilliant the game also tries to do its best to remember your gameplay your style so that way when you face them or see them within a battle maybe you bring them into one of the other maps to play against them as another ruling ai empire they will try to mimic your play style this for me is absolutely brilliant i think it's gonna really add to the replayability of this game now, they've actually added 26 different Ascension traits, which I think is a really good number. Now, I haven't actually had a look through them myself just yet, but I like the fact that they've added so many and it's literally not just, you know, a handful. Now, as well as changing the Pantheon itself, they've also added new content to the Pantheon. So there's new things for you to work to actually unlock. Again, I really like this because this game has been out for a while now. So it's important that they keep adding new content. And again, this is part of the free update, so no DLC needed. They've also done an overhaul on hero recruitment. They say that they're unhappy with how it was. In other words, you got a new city, which meant you got an extra hero cap. So they've removed that feature and changed it. And it's now an overtime basis. So I believe it's after every five turns, you're able to recruit a hero. And as time goes on, that time gets longer and longer and longer. But the deeper you get into the game, the more heroes you're going to be to recruit 
They've also done a major change to necromancy. Now, this for me is a welcome change. They say that it didn't feel like you truly had control over the dead, being able to raise bodies as you want. Now, I love necromancy. It is my main state of play. My main factions are some form of necromancer. So I love the fact that this got a complete overhaul almost every single thing that you thought you knew about necromancy has now changed so builds and play and all that kind of thing need to be reworked because necromancy is possibly the new meta i don't know just how overpowered they've made it or if they've over made it overpowered at all but i'm very much looking forward to playing this build even if we don't end up playing with a dlc this necromancy change is in the game as we speak and it really is a complete overhaul over necromancy there is a lot changed like i said definitely hit those patch notes if you want to know every single detail but i'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out they've also made general quality of life changes they've made it a little bit smoother in places um so i think it's overall a fantastic update i'm really glad that they you know constantly churning out fixes and changes for this game it's really good to see new content get added for absolutely nothing and not to mention this came out with a paid for dlc so what exactly did we get with that dlc so with the DLC, we actually got a brand new culture. That culture is called Primal. It is nature affiliated and it comes with a few interesting bonuses. We also got brand new racial forms as well. So in other words, we get more agency over how we want our empire to look. I absolutely love this as always. The more diversity, the better. And of course, that does include brand new mounts for our troops to be riding on as well. It also comes with two brand new tomes that you can unlock throughout your playthrough. Now, both of these tomes are affiliated to Astral and to Nature. Some of them have incredibly powerful troops and spells associated with them so i can see them being a big major selling point when it comes to moving forward with this game i think especially pvp they haven't really quite got a balance right every new dlc that comes out seems to be more powerful than the last so when it comes to pvp options then maybe this is going to be the new meta and the way we have to play it's going to be interesting moving forward just to see just how well balanced the game is now. Uh, when it comes to just single player though, I'm really excited to see more tomes, more magic, more more troop units being added because um, just the more content, the better. This is of course a you know 4x strategy game, so you're looking to have more the better. But there we have it, guys. That is my rundown of this free update and, of course, the DLC 2. For the full patch notes, look down in the description. I've been a monk. We've been a critic Hewless. Thank you for joining me once again, guys. And, of course, if you're looking for more Age of Wonders players, we do have an active and growing Discord. The link for that can also be found down in the description. It would be nice to have some more Age of Wonders players inside the Discord, too. But until next time, I've been a monk with Binnacle Securities, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.